Uh, anyway, you might get a quiet bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our last speaker tonight before we go to questions is Kay Green. I have introduced her, but it was so long ago, I think I better just remind you who she was. Um, Kay is a long-time Labour activist um, and is a, a real supporter of uh, gender, criti gender critical feminists on the left. She has uh, been working tirelessly within the Labour Party to try and pursue um, women's rights, and she is here with a particular message this evening for the membership of the Labour Party. Just speaking to both of them. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah? yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. How many Labour members or supporters do we have here tonight? Brilliant. Good. Thank you. And thank you for still being in. <laughs> I know about the frustrations and the conflict in the Labour Party for people who've been trying to discuss sex and gender lately. Um, I also know that those same frustrations and conflicts are happening to people in every organisation where this comes up. So please don't think the Labour Party is any better or any worse than any others. But my message tonight is specifically for the Labour Party. If you're not a member, please apply it to your organisations. Thank you. Now, I would like to start basically by talking to the Labour Party about that fantastic 2017 manifesto. It was so good. Everybody loved it. And we put it together in record time. It was a heck of a rush. It wasn't entirely democratic. And in that desperate rush to put that manifesto together, we put in, in different sections, a conflict between the protected characteristics of sex and gender reassignment. That conflict is not inevitable unless you try and solve it by talking about gender identity. Now, my message to the Labour Party, I hope this will go out on film and some people will see it there, but can you please spread it amongst your fellow members? My speech tonight is that message. Firstly, the three vital facts. Number one, you cannot be against gender stereotyping because it's sexist and protect the idea of gender identity. That is innate gender stereotyping. <laughs> Our rule book tries to do both those things. Please explain it everywhere you go. Thing two, you cannot protect sexual orientation and tell lesbians they must believe that anyone can be a woman. That's in our rule book. And finally, and the one that I've been really fighting over lately, you cannot support freedom of speech and expression and demand that we treat an unproven idea as sacrosanct. All right. I believe that Labour needs its women, all of them, working full strength for an anti-austerity Labour government. So please forgive me this evening. Although I talk to you, in my mind, I'm also talking to all those people over there at conference tonight, and I hope you'll help them hear this later. This summer, I was one of two people who were turned down as a council candidate by my local party because people complain about us expressing our opinions about sex and gender. Hello, person two over there, right? <laughs> A third candidate backed out because she was fed up of being slandered and mistrusted because of her views about this. It happens a lot. It happens to party members up and down the country, and it's party members who are doing it. It's no one else. I would like to say to the Labour Party, I do understand. We're under all kinds of pressure. We're fed up of slanders and controversies and attacks on our people. But you've got this one the wrong way round. 
appeasing noisy complainers doesn't work. <laughs> you make them more confident and vastly more unpleasant. In the long run, also, you move further and further away from what most people actually want. By complying with bullies and gossips, you silence the quiet people. In our case, on this issue, that means the vulnerable people. I can speak out all you want. But the people you're silencing are the abuse survivors, the less out there lesbians, and perhaps most terrifying of all, the transsexual women who have the misfortune of not agreeing with Stonewall. And I think also we should remember those parents who are worried sick about what their children are learning about sex and gender and desperately want a proper conversation about it. So, to get to the really contentious bit, you cannot run all women's shortlists and training schemes under the Equalities Act exemption with the stated goal of increasing female representation and support self-ID and say absolutely anyone can join your list and courses. So, it's a conflict we've built in. This bit is to our Labour Party officials. Please pass it on to your comrades. I know you think you proved us wrong when you suspended David Lewis for saying he's a woman on Wednesdays. <laughs> yes, your rule book states that you accept self-ID when it's in good faith. And yes, he admitted he was just making a point. And you think you won by suspending him for that. But if sex self-ID was protected in law, as you say you want it to be, you would have been breaking the law when you didn't believe him, good faith or not. Oh, by the way, males are famously good at saying the words that give them power positions. David Lewis's point was well made, I thank him. Now, everybody, Pass it around, please look again at that manifesto and that rule book. The conflict between feminists and gender ideology people in the Labour Party is there because we have built it into the rules. It's grossly unfair to deny people roles and a voice in the party because of a conflict the Labour Party has made inevitable. I know a lot of people will say, well, the manifesto stance has been upheld by motions from many local groups and trades unions. Well, yes, it has, in the face of confusion caused by those policies. I'd like to try and explain how that happens and how it's subverted democracy in every party, every union, just about everywhere. Our Labour Party honestly believes itself to be incontrovertibly in favour of sex self-ID. It believes that defending the rights of trans people means defending the concept of gender identity. It believes that questioning identity politics in this case is a form of prejudice known as transphobia. It is wrong. In the last two years, dozens of members, good socialist women, have stood up at meetings and tried to explain that conflict of interest. That's not transphobia when you try to explain. Socialist women always have and always will stand up for minorities and the right to be different. They've tried to explain that feminists have always stood against gender stereotyping and therefore are against the idea of gender identity. That's not being against anyone. It's not being against any group of people. It's being against queer theory. You're allowed to be against a theory. A phobia is an irrational fear. Denying lesbian and gay people the right to live and love as is right to them often is, become, is often a phobia. But by contrast, women do have science-based reasons for fearing male opponents. 
The sex exemption in the Equalities Act is there for a good reason. It's there because girls and women need that protection. It's real. Women have tried and sometimes succeeded in passing motions on the topic, but generally they fail. This has led to an extraordinary situation where most party branches have apparently agreed to suppress gender-critical gender feminism, as though being critical of gender is some sort of aberration rather than the core premise of feminism that it is. This is how it happens. A woman stands up to speak to a motion against sex self-ID or against affirmation only in schools or against accepting gender identity as a fact. She begins to explain how the language around this issue has been pulled around until even attempting to define a woman becomes contentious. And a three-way split happens. Those who've studied the issue divide into supporters and opposers. But most of the room sits in doubt, wondering how to be good socialists in that linguistic minefield. The motion goes to the vote, and many abstain in confusion. The balance between each side may decide the outcome, but it's likely that the doubters will defer to anyone who's had LGBT or Stonewall training for fear of looking prejudiced. That does not mean the majority of Labour members support gender identity theory or sex self-ID. It means the majority are confused by the conflicting ideas that were shunted into our policy in 2017 in the rush to publish that manifesto. Let's not do it again. Sadly, those ideas have been held in place by an all too common belief in this thing, transphobia, that so many feminists who spent a lifetime working for equality have mysteriously gone down with. Complaints fly to and fro. Gender critical feminists get pushed out of officer posts and the more this happens, the more gender critical voices disappear from labor, the more firmly the party believes itself to be pro-sex self-ID. I've watched women lose their roles and motions up and down the country because of a belief in transphobia. I've watched democracy go down to the three-way split in labor, in trades unions, and in other lefty organizations. I'm very lefty. And in the meantime, I've had conversations with MPs, with party officials, with union reps and execs, and they're saying, this is wrong. We need more people to speak out. <laughs> We need more people to speak out. We need calm, informative conversations. We offer our profound gratitude to organizations like Women's Place who've led the way in this. We need to do that. Dear Labour Party, you would get such different results if you required secret ballots on sensitive issues. You would have more women with more energy out campaigning for you if you would publicly accept their views. Not necessarily agree with them, but if you accept their views, this won't happen. Scotland managed it. They've talked about it. They didn't die. Let's us have a go. You may be wondering, especially if you're a man, why women in particular seem so afraid of speaking on this issue. You'd best do some research. Do you know how many of the women around you are abuse survivors of one sort or another? Do you know what that does? Do you know how efficiently most women are brought up to believe that their value as women depends on being seen to be caring and inclusive? And we're asking them to say something that will be seen to be anti-trans. It's terrifying. Do you know just how painful that becomes for a woman? who's looking after someone who's suffering from gender dysphoria. And this is huge. 
Do you know just how many perfectly ordinary men around you are just longing for a chance to slap those women down when they say something that everybody thinks is wrong? In my branch, good socialist, lovely people, any woman applying for a place that is reserved for a woman at some point gets cornered and has to listen to one of the men, good staunch socialist men, explaining to them how places reserved for women mess up men's careers. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is after a lifelong training in not getting in the way for women to get through that without saying, oh, sorry? Can you imagine how I felt after surviving that without too much trouble to be told I could not stand for our council because I said something that could tr offend transgender people? Dear Labour Party, do you know how keenly our many loyal Labour Party women here feel the urgency of winning a Labour government? Do you know how divided against themselves they are when they feel the need to speak on an issue that their party is intolerant of? Where women's groups have led the way, the left is lagging behind. But everybody got this wrong. We just need to teach our party what it needs to do next, and that takes some brave talking, OK, guys? Here's a shout out to everybody on the campaign trail now who's a lefty and a bit nervous about talking out. There's a load of these cards at the back. This is Rise Above Gender. It's going to be a national network. We're working on it now where lefties can find each other, support each other and get talking. Not just in the Labour Party, in every socialist and lefty organisation. Just sign up, find your group. And when you start talking in your CLP or your trades union or whatever, this is a great place to start. The Women's Place UK Manifesto. I've read through it looking desperately for something that isn't socialist and I can't find anything that isn't socialist. <laughs> Take it with you. And finally, my last point, something I learned on Facebook. I expect you already knew, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Radical doesn't mean extreme at all. It means roots. So if we think about radical feminism, and if we think about radical socialism, real feminism is gender critical. And real socialism cannot succeed without feminism. Liberating half of humanity is not socialism. So please go and tell your comrades, the left needs to accept gender critical feminism. It's not anti-trans, it's not anti-anyone. It respects women and men. It respects reality and humanity and it will make us all stronger. Take a card when you go, get the leftist done. Take 10. Um, what amazing, um, defiant, determined speakers we have tonight. It's really intimidating to speak with that noise behind you, and thank you for the support that you've shown those speakers. Um, if you're not on Twitter, you should know there is absolute outrage at, at what is happening here tonight, um, and uh, Sussex Police are having a busy night of people complaining to them, asking them how, how it is they don't know, uh, you know how, to, how to police a demonstration when they seem to be quite good at it. Uh, with other groups, well, all I, well, they, yeah, maybe they've gone for some fish and chips. I don't know. Um, then they're not doing a great job. Anyway, um, I, you know, do feel free to complain. We certainly will be complaining. Okay, what we're going to do now is we are going to open up to the floor for questions. I am going to be, I'm ask, I'm going to ask people to be brief. So if you can make one point or ask a question, I'm going to take two or three two or three questions at a time. Um, I know some people in the room, I don't know other people in the room, so I will just indicate that you are speaking by something you are wearing. Um, and I will, uh, Philippa is gonna, Philippa's very good at the rolling mic. 